Hello, everybody. My name is Ivo. Um, I'm probably best known by standard qualification, which is coming now to an end, and I ne need to get busy with some other stuff. Um, just recently, I pulled in also Gene uh, to this talk um, because he's working on most of those uh, ideas that we are going to present, and uh, he's probably the better person to present them. Um, so, if you remember from, oh, not yet. Uh, if you remember from one of my slides from last year, I was teasing a little bit that we are looking into freeing 90% of uh, heap memory in Bazel, and we were actually wrong. We freed 95%. Um, but we were wrong again because not so many people care about freeing heap memory at the end of the build. Um, people are more interested in reducing the peak memory used during the build. Um, so this is... But before we present those ideas, let's first go over the last year and the memory reductions that happened. Um, will you do this? Slide? Yeah, so um, the Bazel team has been hard at work in 2023 to improve the memory efficiency of Bazel uh, by nearly a third of it. Um, on the right, you can see we have listed some of the themes of the optimizations that uh, were done to Bazel. Uh, a lot of these revolve around how Bazel is a Java application. And we kind of take advantage of that, learn how the GC works, and um, also improve Bazel's internal computation model. Um, for example, I think there was a lot of work to intern uh, highly duplicate objects. Uh, and also, um, we will talk about, about Skyframe later, but um, it is the internal model of Bazel which uh, has a lot of roof optimizations. And, but ultimately, we have reached some kind of a plateau at this point, uh, and we need to consider serious architectural changes to Bazel to get even bigger wins. Mm -hmm. So let's first uh, acknowledge all of the people who contributed ideas to um, the projects we are going to present. Uh, Justin, Lukacs, Nathan. Uh, probably the most ideas are coming from Shahan, uh, also Toby and you. And uh, also for other folks on Bedel team for helping the ideas. Um, we would also like to um, ask community to join if they have other ideas that might help these efforts. And uh, maybe there was a question uh, posed uh, yesterday um, if uh, Bazel team would be accepting uh, contributions to core of Bazel. Um, I would say yes, but with a lot of alignment with Bazel team, um, because we still need to build Google's code. And we'd, we wouldn't like to have two implementations which means that a single implementation needs to build whole Google tree and whole Google code and uh, pass all the high room law that was created there. Yeah, and I think I want to add that uh, we, we are very aware of Google's resource usage for, for uh, Blaze internally, but in your unique use cases, if you ever run into similar problems like this, feel free to talk to us and we'll get some data, um, share some data. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's go through the ideas that we are going to present. So last year we announced Bazel 0.1x. Uh, now we call this Sky Focus. Uh, the current status is it's implemented and you, might, you may even try it out in Bazel. Uh, in progress, uh, we have analysis caching implementation. Uh, you, um, Jean and Shahan are working on this. Uh, we have in progress investigation on skeletal analysis, uh, which you is working on. And in the future, the holy grail of, grail of everything uh, is distributed analysis. I'll quickly talk about a little bit about uh, what each of the ideas, uh, the wins of each of the ideas, and go into that in depth uh, individually later. So firstly, what is Sky Focus? At a very high level, uh, you tell Bazel what files you'll be changing, and Bazel will discard 
or the state that it doesn't need uh, to, to rebuild the other files that are not in the working set. So for example, if you only if you work in a project directory, some deeply nested project directory, and only have incremental changes to that directory, it doesn't need any state to recompute changes to your external repos, for example, because you don't change them. Um, so in this case, depending on your working set and your project structure set, set, project structure set up, you can get very high retained heap wins because this is something that runs after the build. Uh, secondly, skeletal analysis. Um, this is a fundamental change to the basal analysis evaluation model. Um, currently, it's a kind of top-down and bottom-up manner in one go, um, and it's lazily evaluated. So um, we want to split this up, and that this will give us a bit of a peak heat reduction in about 20% from early, early, very early experimental uh, prototypes. But maybe it's worth mentioning it's trading in wall time. Yes, so because we are changing the evaluation model, it does trade wall time for memory, if wall time is not a particular concern. Uh, thirdly, uh, analysis caching. Uh, Bazel already does a lot of you know, local analysis caching, but a lot of you might already know that once the Bazel process uh, ends, uh, you throw away all the in-memory state, and then on the next build, you have to rebuild the in-memory graph again. Uh, so we want to kind of figure out a way to cache this somewhere locally or on a remote server that you, you can now share uh, state with, with other Bazel instances. Um, and the, based on the project, again, based on the use case, we do see a very nice reduction in both war time and peak in memory. Um, this uses some, some ideas from SkyFocus. We'll talk about it a bit later. Um, maybe yeah. one thing to mention here. So we reduce uh, analysis wall time for 70%. Uh, there was a question yesterday in the ID group um, whether you should wait for coffee or click the reanalyze file button. Um, if this project lands, we wouldn't need to do either of that. Yeah, you have no time for coffee. <laughs> And lastly, um, everything at the top builds into this general, this very, you know, what Ivo said about Holy Grail idea, which is distributed analysis. Um, it is the idea that you want to horizontally scale Bazel itself, right? Right now you can horizontally scale RBE, but we want to scale Bazel itself. Um, again, uh, trade-offs and limitations with every new idea. Uh, for example, Sky Focus is only really useful for incremental builds because you have to specify a working set. Uh, skeletal analysis is a garbage collection algorithm that really only works help you um, works for clean builds like CI builds where you don't have to keep state and you're interested in reducing that peak. Um, analysis caching adds more infrastructure to your build, like you now need another backend to store the state, uh, introducing potential more failure modes. And um, lastly, like some of these projects do trade one metric for another metric, so it really depends on the use case here. Yeah. So now before we go to explaining the ideas, let's explain a bit more how um, Bazel actually works. Um, I'll do a, the explanation on two very simple build files. First one is foo. Um, it loads one Bazel library. It has foo, foo1, and foo2 foo two targets. Um, foo depends on foo1 and foo2. And both of them depend on bar, which happens to be on another package. And it depends on bar1 target. Now, uh, one thing that's very important to Bazel functionality are DAX. And there was a comment from one of Bazel team members uh, that they wished that more people knew what DAX were. Those are directed acyclic graphs, um, which means that edges are directed and that there are no cycles um, that would also be directed. Why is this important? Um, this is coming from uh, computational theory um, because we would like to evaluate each node um, in a process, and uh, each node may depend on other computations. Um, so the direction also gives you um, uh, the direction how the information is uh, transferred to the graph, and uh, the cycles are impossible because um, we wouldn't know where to start the computation inside the cycle. 
There are several examples of DEX in uh, build systems. Uh, one that's mostly talked about are dependency graphs, and you can see the example of the build files on the picture on the right. Um, Basal modules, it's not really an example of a DAG because we allow cycles, and uh, I'm actually re really glad that we do. Uh, action graph, so action graph is something that Basal constructs. Um, it's, uh, each action has uh, input files, output files, and uh, a command line. And you can imagine that this is also a DAG, because if there were cycles between actions, we wouldn't know which one to execute first. And last but not least example is our SkyFrame nodes. Um, so this is in core of Bazel, and SkyFrame nodes also form a, form a DAG. Uh, one very specific problem with this DAG is that Bazel does not know it in advance. So, for example, when you start building target foo, you don't know yet what its dependencies are before loading its build file. And you will figure out that it depends on bar, and again, you don't know what uh, its dependencies are before loading bar slash build file. Um, it also helps uh, to write down how SkyFrame works. So SkyFrame is uh, a framework inside Bazel, which is able to compute um, some functions. Uh, those functions are purely functional, which is the most important property, uh, which also allows us to memoize those functions, to recompute them incrementally, and to compute them in parallel. Um, a small example of such a function is configure target, and uh, I'll put the most emphasis on it on this target here because it's actually the core of the analysis, and this is what we are optimizing. Um, configure target actually takes two parameters. Here, for simplicity, we have only one. This is the target that we are analyzing, and the result of the functions are a set of providers and actions that this target has created. Um, second parameter is the configuration. That's why the function is called configure target. Now, if we go into more details, let's say that we are building a target foo foo. The first thing that Bazel will try to evaluate is the target completion function, and that function will run a configured target of foo. Inside the configure target, first thing that we do, we load the package foo. We need to uh, obtain the file of foo slash build, parse it. We figure out what are the loads inside that file. So we call busy load function for each of those loads. And then we evaluate the package file and uh, return a map of targets. Targets here are very simple. They are basically just structs that have a list of label dependencies. They are not analyzed yet. And one of the problems that you might already notice here is we are also memoizing package function, which means that in every build file that we evaluate, there might be a lot of targets that we never actually need during the build. Um, we are calling those targets sibling waste. And we know that this accounts for about 70% of analysis memory. Um, so Bazel is really not doing optimal thing here. Um, another thing that we know uh, from the previous talk, there was a mention of lazy macros. Um, if we evaluated the macros lazily, we could free 30% of uh, Bazel, Bazel's analysis memory. So that's also one motivation to start using symbolic macros. Um, and the third thing you can notice is that we eagerly load a BZL file. And uh, this will actually cause that all of the BZL files are loaded transitively. This is mostly not a problem, because they don't take much memory. Um, it might be a problem in Bazel world when those loads start uh, fetching down uh, repositories. So there's also some work going on to make those loads lazy. 
Now we have the package. Go, let's go back to configure target function. Uh, first thing that we need to do is for all of the dependencies of that target, we need to analyze them. And we do this by calling configure target function again. Um, this is like the first stage. You can imagine that this stage will already build you the deck. And then the second thing is to evaluate the implementation function. And we need to pass into the implementation function all the providers that were computed in the previous step. Uh, the last thing that happens in target completion function is to take all the artifacts out of the fault info, execute them, and then return them on the command line as being built. Now it helps to also present this in form of a deck. Um, I'll abbreviate the functions a little bit. On the top we have target completion. That calls configure target of foo. This is going to load package of foo and then, uh, in turn, configure target of foo1 and foo2. Package of foo is going to load the build file. It's going to load lib.bzl. And then foo1 and foo2 uh, request bar. And the same thing happens again. Package for bar is loaded, build file for bar is loaded, and bar1 may be analyzed. Um, this graph also shows you um, how the incrementality works here. If you're going to modify any of the files on this graph, uh, Bazel will know exactly what parts of the graph to invalidate and to recompute. Now, going to one of our first optimizations, skeleton analysis, um, the basic idea here is to get around this problem that we don't know the full deck in advance. Um, I mentioned the point in configure target function before between um, computing the dependencies and actually executing the implementation function. If you imagine we put a lock there in between, this first graph is created when all the configured targets run up to that lock. Then the next thing we do, we release this lock and we start configuring the targets. The process happens bottom up. You can um, imagine a moving front, bottom targets get analyzed, then the next thing, uh, we can uh, analyze further targets along this front, and what, one thing that you will notice is that targets on the bottom are not needed anymore. So this is the way how to reduce peak memory during the build but at the expense of wall time because we need to know the full graph in advance. So, you? Me? You? Okay. So, um, at a very, very high level here, uh, we scatter analysis is just exercise to turn analysis from a single top-down, bottom-up visitation to a top-down, then bottom-up visitation, and in the bottom-up visitation, we do a lot of optimization. So we know this uh, is useful because the targets themselves, the package, uh, they occupy some percentage of the memory, and then when you're doing the bottom-up evaluation, doing the uh, garbage collection on the way up, lets, you, lets us lower that peak by a little bit. So. Again, uh, we retain our nodes in the front here, we garbage collect anything, everything below, uh, we trade wall time for memory, and because we are dropping state now, um, you no longer have the you know, Skyframe nodes to do incremental, incremental builds. So this is really useful for your CI builds where you have like memory limited uh, bandwidth. Uh, so early experiments show that this did reduce 20% peak keep. Again, this is early prototype experiments, and this is also very specific to a particular in, in, internal build in Google. However, we do see uh, no good results um, uh, for this. Uh, in the graph, is the red line is the line that's with this skeletal analysis, and blue line is the one without. And you can see that in the beginning, the as the packages and the uh, package uh, targets are being loaded, it goes all the way up, and uh, the, the decline is much higher due to the uh, intra analysis drop, GC. Okay, so let's go to the next idea um, Sky Focus. So, um, 
Instead of pre-computing the full graph, uh, the second idea is to cut some of it away. Basically, developers only work on part of the code. They don't care about the whole repository. And let's say that in this case, they only like to work on foo. They tell Bazel that we are working on, on foo. And what Bazel can do is figure out which targets, which SkyFrame nodes actually depend on foo, um, pull a cut in between, and garbage collect the rest. So we call this cut a frontier, uh, just for a naming convention. Um, and in a real build, really depending on what your working set is and depending on the project structure, which really determines the baseline memory usage, your, the, your wins you get will, will, will vary. So in this case, it's, in this particular build, it's not, probably not going to save a lot. But if you have a huge uh, cut, then that's where the wins come in. Yeah, so here we can get those 95%. So SkyFocus, uh, unlike SkyTo analysis, is really for uh, the case where you, you complain that your Mac, uh, your Bazel is slowing down your Mac, or it's, it's being too heavy on your Mac because there's not enough memory. Um, so it's good for incremental builds. We recognize that uh, in our own, you know, own, even our own development experiences, we always change the same few files during an inner loop development. So we do can we, we can set a working set and. We can just see the ones that uh, the, the state that's not needed for this uh, for changes outside of this working set. In Bazel 8, you can use this today uh, with these two flags, uh, enable sky focus and working set equals to some uh, set of uh, directories and files. Uh, UX again open to feedback. When, when for example, once you use sky focus, the um, when Bazel drops the state, you cannot use Bazel query anymore because the graph is missing. Uh, so it will tell you that you, you can use it. Um, so uh, again, uh, sorry, uh, we have seen up to 95% uh, of retain, reduced retain heat resist. Okay. So uh, this is the project that I'm uh, currently working on with uh, Shahan uh, in New York. Uh, we are very excited about this because it's a new frontier to scale Bazel. Um, and one way to think about it is, uh, that we, let's, let's describe the problem first, because um, when you start a new Bazel instance, it does the work in the memory to store the, build up the graph, but you, once the Bazel server gets restarted, or you come, uh, uh, it, it also, uh, the process gets queued after some amount of time in uh, with the uh, idle server, idle server seconds flag. The results get thrown away, and you you have to do this all the time. So we think like RBE, where the results are cached remotely, but we do it for Bezos internal state. Um, so the state that we care about here are configure targets, aspects, and also even the execution phase. So like. What Bezos sees when the action finishes, which are which is just the paths to the output artifacts. So the in-memory state is serialized uh, and stored remotely. Uh, so the vision that we have is that this state can be stored, uh, can be shared, and also the, the cost of communication, communicating this state and storing this state is less than the cost of recomputing. But otherwise, you just recompute them, right? So uh, I want to draw some parallels to maybe help concretize this a bit more. So with remote RBE, remote, remote build execution, you save time by not rerunning actions that have been cached by someone else, well, when they have been built by someone else. Uh, you invalidate changes to action inputs, outputs, uh, command lines, and environment variables, for example. For analysis caching, we save time by not rerunning analysis phase, or, or parts of the analysis phase, if they were already analyzed by someone else. However, the invalidation inputs here are a bit different. It's Bazel itself because Bazel de de defines how to evaluate these BZL files. Um, the SkyFrame evaluator, um, the build file itself, transitive, transitively loaded Starlux symbols, uh, top level uh, configuration, which is the top level flex that you pass in, and also other pre computed state based on your environment that Bezos pick, Bezos itself will pick up on. Um, the naming is, is analysis caching, but it can also be executed, uh, extended to the execution phase, which means that you, 
we can we can even not even bother to send a request if we know um, exec, uh, sorry RB action request if we know that you don't need to send it. So that's that's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. So a bit of how it works today. Um, so following the same graph structure, the deck structure earlier, we in the in the cache writing build in the in the build that we want to upload the bytes with, uh, we define the working set similarly, uh, and just below the working set, which is the frontier, we upload just the frontier bytes. Um, and then in the cache reading build, when you're doing a top-down evaluation, uh, when you're evaluating a configured target node or aspect node, we check if that, we fetch that one, and we can do a top-down pruning. So in a way, if that configured target build is, uh, if, if that configured target has a large subgraph, you don't even need to bring in a lot, uh, evaluate or have state for the large subgraph. You just need that one uh, CT, and that CT has all the information in the provider that is needed by the reverse dependencies. So incrementality model, currently we have two approaches. One is there's no incrementality. You sync to a source state, or, or you check out to a source state uh, where the uh, cache has been primed, and then you can immediately fetch the green nodes here. Or, and then the more complex bit is the general incrementality where you can check out to any commit and have Bazel determine a version and, uh, uh, for you and determines whether it, uh, the, the SkyFrame node needs to be invalidated. Um, this is almost, uh, it's kind of specific to the version control system that you have because we now rely, we rely on the version control system to tell us, hey, what files have changed between the two um, the, the, the commit that the bytes were synced at and the commit that you are evaluating uh, the build at. So what to expect? Uh, we can expect some level of, uh, uh, well, a, drastic, a dr drastic reduction in core analysis wall type and PKIP. Um, we want to develop, we are developing this in the open, uh, in Bazel, where, where applicable, uh, but where we are building implementations of like, for example, the backend service and the uh, version control hooks internally. So we will create APIs around that and we want to invite uh, discussions around this to kind of you know, maybe following the footsteps of remote APIs, RE API, uh, to have um, communi community implementations of this. Um, how priority right now is to have to have a ro robust implementation internally, uh, get gauge the real world usage patterns and share the learnings with the community after this. So again, we do see pretty nice numbers around this uh, based on our early uh, experiments for the co-analysis phase. Yeah, and it's, as I said before, especially useful for IDEs because they only run the analysis. They don't run so much of the execution phase. So I will quickly talk a bit about uh, the f future distributed analysis. What is distributed analysis? It's a federation of basal workers that you deploy, and then they can all talk to each other. Uh, which means that if you have a big graph, maybe the size of Google, not the size of Google <laughs> 3, but big enough, uh, you can have assigned each Bazel worker to analyze a shard of packages, maybe alphabetically sorted, I don't know, like we can determine the algorithm. But they can communicate the, the results of the providers to each other, and then ideally you have a horizontally, horizontal scalable Bazel itself. Um, and also a nice second order effect of this is Bazel on your machine, uh, assuming that you can now talk to this cluster of Bazel workers, becomes ultra incremental because now you only need resources for your local uh, invalidated state. Current and, state is yeah. that this is still in a very, very early research? Yeah, extremely yeah. speculative phase, uh, but everything that we talked about, all the ideas that we talked about earlier, do form the foundation of this idea. Include, as a lot of the work um, my uh, coworker Shahan has spent uh, building to Bazel with other, is a serialization stack. So we do need to serialize literally the Java object graph of Bazel. So there are codecs everywhere <laughs> in, Bazel, uh, in the Bazel code base, uh, which Shahan is, is working on a lot. Okay. You want to round up? To round things up, um, three major ideas, sky focus, skeletal analysis, and remote analysis caching. They have different trade-offs, um, but we think that the last one, remote analysis caching, uh, actually improves all of the quantities that we care about. Um, so this is what we are 
focusing on now, and it should also provide us a stepping stone to distributed analysis. And that's it. Thank you, everybody, for your attention. Hi. The, uh, the drop node slide that you've got previously, that I think it referenced a 70% number, uh, is that what is currently available in the heuristically drop nodes uh, command line option, or is that something new? Something new. It's, okay. a different, it's a different uh, system altogether. OK. And uh, I'll speak on behalf of remote execution. We welcome your analysis phase information eagerly and uh, look forward to the day that we can do persistent workers to accommodate the distributed uh, Bazel fleet. Yep. Thank you. Uh, one question about the analysis phase caching. Will it support local caching as well, or is it remote only? Uh, so it, there's nothing preventing from local service. You can you can run a local like uh, key, like a key value store locally if you want to. Um, we haven't tried writing to disk yet, but I think we, we think that um, in memory thing might might work better. Actually. Okay, but I would need to spin up something locally where I can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there any uh, chance you can that bake that in into Bazel? Like the thing I'm thinking about is I'm like iterating locally. I need to kill the server for some reason. And I'm starting it up like one minute after, right? I mean, yeah. if the previous state would store to be stored on my disk, I bet that's faster than retrieving it from the network. Yeah, so we, we, can, pro we can probably ship a default imp uh, implementation that writes to uh, Bazel external area. Mm -hmm. um, and w not, not you mentioned that, that um, a use case that I've totally forgot to mention is when you toggle between flags, let's say flags that do discard your analysis cache, with this in place, you can now toggle flex almost for free because you are now storing the state excellently. So the, the impact is much uh, lower for this. So we, we do want to provide a low friction setup for Bazel at least to start with, and then we can figure out cool. the future. Yeah. Um, there is a project called Bazel Diff that seems to do uh, something very similar to Skyfocus. Uh, do you think that Skyfocus is a like, just complete replacement for that? So did you say Bazel Diff? Yes. Uh, you mean with, I, I'm not quite sure. Well, Basil diff is solving a different kind of problem. Yeah, right? I think so. Yeah, Sky Focus solves the problem of Basil hogging too much memory, whereas Basil diff, I think, solves the problem of like, tell me what this, uh, what target change, changed, or, right? Yeah. But uh, I think uh, ultimately the way most people use it is they use Basil diff to extract a list of targets from uh, uh, those files. And um, then you pass these targets as an argument, and you just basically tell Bazel to focus on that part of the. Of the so graph. I think yeah. So remote analysis caching should help with that, because you don't longer need to analyze things that have, have not changed. Okay. So not sky focus analysis caching. 